Hey everybody, Quantum back here again, and we have a new and improved setup with the old phone being recommissioned as a lore counter. I've since downloaded an even better app that's more big and clear, so hopefully in the future it will be very easy for you guys to keep track of where we're at. But in this particular matchup here, I wanted to showcase my friend's Amber Amethyst aggro deck because you don't really see this deck really popping up in the format anymore, but it did get some interesting additions from set 4 Ursula's Return, mainly the new Donald Duck bodyguard, and my friend has put together a very interesting list here. He wanted to test it out against some of the more meta decks, so I still had my Emerald Steel deck constructed, and uh, he said, yeah, let's go ahead and give it a go. Traditionally, any aggro deck into steel is very, very bad, but you're going to see that the opponent is going to be able to put up a decent fight across two games. Um, we do get a pretty Pretty ideal start here uh, with the turn one Diablo into turn two Bucky into shift Diablo on the same turn they're discarding a Zeus the opponent is going to draw and we're going to draw off the Diablo here and in this scenario the combination of the uh, the card advantage that you get off the Diablo with the steel songs is probably going to be too much for aggro to deal with when they're on the play we know aggro is very strong on the draw and why this deck might actually be a good choice for you is one it's not very complicated right you i mean it there is still very critical decision making that you have to make with an aggro deck for example my opponent here specifically noted that mulliganing um and keeping the simba i think he said was a mistake because if he knew his turn one play was going to be the pascal he said why would i need simba to bodyguard right i i wouldn't i would just play another character, not have to waste the bodyguard, um, or even leave something susceptible to getting run over with bodyguard because Pascal would be protected with evasive. So my turn three is pretty weak. I don't have a Floodborne, so I'm going to just hard cast a sudden chill just to force a discard. Um, but what I was saying earlier is aggro is a decent option because on the play, it's very strong and you can likely win against most decks on the play. Um, well, I shouldn't say likely win against most decks because it really, it really does depend if you curve out nicely and are able to consistently drop the threats. But with being on the Amethyst package, you have Queen's Castle, which we know is very strong against the control decks, um, and especially Emerald Steel and Ruby Sapphire. So you can close games out that way, and you have the Goat Cycle as well. The new Donald Duck that has Bodyguard also is a surprise lore gain. When you drop it, you gain, uh, or sorry, give a character one lore, and then if that character quests, you know, they quest with that extra lore, which is very strong. Uh, my opponent here drops an Arthur, and again, not too sure how they feel or how I feel about Arthur in the aggro deck in particular. I think they were just testing this out, but it doesn't seem to fit too well in this aggro deck. Um, but again, until you test more and grind out more matches, it, you can't say for sure. I think Arthur is more suited to a control deck, but that one strength we've seen now is becoming much, uh, very much a liability. I don't know what Lorcan is going to do to fix that one strength stat line because there's so many things that lose to it here. Um, that it loses to, sorry, I mean, like with Brawl and the new Sisu, which not a lot of people play, but the big Sisu for sure, um, and of course, Madame Medusa. Um, so here, the opponent is on, I think, just two cards now, since I played a Floodborne Flynn Rider on four, which forced them to discard. They were down to one card, and then they drew for turn there. We draw off the Diablo, and they know, right, at this point, uh, the aggro deck might not have enough gas in order to outrace this Flynn Rider. Um, if it was anything other than the Flynn Rider, the only other four-cost Floodborne that we play in this deck, of course, is the Jafar, um, which means the Jafar would be throwing itself into the opposing characters, drawing cards, and uh, outing the opponent's board as well. So this is where aggro kind of can fall down a little bit against uh, the other control decks. The opponent does see a Queen's Castle, which they opt to play out and ink their other card. I didn't see what it was. I think they were debating, do I play the other card or play the Queen's Castle? Um, they opted to play the Queen's Castle here because I would have to spend a couple turns throwing multiple characters into the castle to out it. They would get a couple of lore gain off of it, but they don't have enough ink to move things to the castle. And this is why the Emerald Steel deck continues to be such a strong force in the metagame is because you discard so many resources, even if it's only two or three, that it puts the opponent on basically three, four, or five ink at most, assuming they have, I guess you could say like one card draw engine that they're able to get off. Um, and if they don't, then they're really stuck with like just like three or four ink and they just can't really do much right now. An aggro deck to counter that, you know, they, they usually play very low to the ground. So they don't need a lot of ink usually. They can function with, you know, three to four ink playing an interaction in a turn. And honestly, aggro decks want to end the game early. The longer the game goes on, the worse it gets for the aggro deck. But again, being on Amethyst, you do have ways to close out the game if you can't stick something on the board to quest, right? You have Queen's Castle, you have um, maybe even Spellbook if you want to play that, but also the Goat is, is, your, is your main source of closing a game out. 
Um, so here we're gonna use strength in order to out the Simba, leaving the Arthur on board. We ink an Aladdin and we have five ink total. We're gonna drop another Diablo. The opponent has no cards in hand to discard. Um, so we're gonna quest for four with the Flynn Rider, which puts us up to six. The opponent is on five and we just leave the Queen's Castle up because at this point we know we can outrace the opponent. We draw one off of our one exerted Diablo, not two since the second Diablo is not yet exerted. Um, the opponent gains two lore off the castle, so they're at seven. And let's see what their top deck is. I think they top deck Chernabog, the big Chernabog, and they are one short of playing it. And you can argue in this situation that Chernabog just wins them the game potentially. I'd have to race a Chernabog plus a Queen's Castle. Um, they obviously wouldn't bounce the Chernabog with the Arthur, but they're one ink short of casting it and putting all their characters back. So right now they just. Um, move the Arthur to the castle and pass turn, knowing full well that that Chernabog in hand will likely be discarded. But Chernabog is a decent counter to discard because as you discard your characters, your Chernabog just becomes cheaper and cheaper to play when you do see it. Um, so we ink Ursula Deceiver, um, and we're going to go ahead and sing the Sudden Chill because I don't actually have a Floodborne to play. But we're going to go ahead now and quest for six, and uh, the app kind of messed up there, so i got to put it back in together. I'm up to 12 now. The opponent was at seven. And we're leaving the opponent with the Arthur on the Queen's Castle. We're not bothering. We could throw everything on board into the castle to out it, right? Including the Bucky. Um, I missed the second draw here off of, you know, when the opponent draws two. I should have I should have drawn four, right? I think I only drew like one actually. Or maybe I drew two off the two Diablos, but I should have drawn four. They top deck an Isabella, which quests for five, I believe. It, they gain plus four lore or plus three lore. It either, it either quests for four or, or five. Um, but if they quest with it, this is the anti-synergy here with Arthur, they can't quest with the Arthur and bounce back to Isabella to close out the game. So I just know next turn I go to 19, and then they can only they can only go to... Um, okay, so they go to 10 here with Arthur, then they gain 2 off Castle, then they quest for like 4 or 5, so they can only go to like 17. So no matter what they top deck, they can't win, because even if they top deck Goat and Mim Snake, I think they can only go to 19 themselves. So yeah, I just quest with everything and go to... 19 since they have no hand and I don't have anything to out the opponent's board here so I just play Beast Trash Kiro and pass. Now you might be going back to that Chernabog interaction or even this Isabella interaction and say well how do you deal with a big threat like this if they can close up the game this way? Well that's where your Brunos come in handy. You need to make sure that you have those Brunos on deck ready to play against the big threat that you can't out the other ways. So when your opponent drops Tamatoa, the big Sisu, that quest for three, um, and, and Isabella here for example, um, you know, a Chernabog, etc. You need to have that Bruno, a, a big steel Cinderella. That Bruno is the card that saves you. Now, if they shift the Cinderella, then you're a little bit, then you're you're potentially in trouble here because the both the cards will go back to hand and then they randomly discard one. You hope that they discard the big Cinderella, um, but it, it at least slows them down. My opponent realizes, yeah, there's nothing they can do here. They did top deck a fox, but they didn't top deck the goat, but they, you know, they only had uh, five ink, so they, they would have needed more ink in order to do the fox and the goat um, in order to win the game. So game two, the opponent is going first here, and they start off with the Kida ink and play Akita. Um, and this interaction is quite interesting because the shift Kida also, from what I understand here, my friend uh, helped explain this to me, the shift Kida basically puts the, you know, like air quotes counters, like negative one counters on characters for the turn. So this Robin Hood I have on board, for example, that I play on turn one, um, would not, if I did shift it after the opponent shifted their Kida, my big Robin Hood would have negative three, which means it would be a zero six when I shift it. So that could be a problem. So the opponent starts off pretty strong with a one and two drop, right? The Wendy Darling being a one three body is pretty strong here. On turn two, we do get the Bucky down. So again, Emerald Steel aggressively mulliganing for Bucky in pretty much every matchup. It's why Emerald Steel could be a little bit more straightforward than other decks like Ruby Sapphire, where it really does depend on the matchup on what you want to mulligan sometimes. And Sapphire Steel in particular, which in my opinion is one of the more complicated decks to play. Um, so the opponent here is thinking about what the best line of play is because I think they have a couple of options, um, but they are fearing the Robin Hood shift. And so they likely go for the key to here for exactly that interaction that I said. So they ink the Donald, which is a card that they are very much a fan of, and they do indeed do the shift Kita. This will allow them to quest for four, putting them to five here, as you can see me adding that lore to their counter. Um, and they also are keeping track with dice on top of their play mat there. Um, but now I'm going to draw for turn, and I have a couple of options here. I remember I had like a Diablo, I think, as well, but this Robin Hood was actually a good draw. I think I drew that for turn because I wanted, I didn't want to ink anything else in my hand, and I do opt to shift the Robin Hood, 
and this to me was like okay I'll just take out the Wendy Darling here but my opponent did kind of clarify that uh, yeah the negative counters um, or you know the key to acts is like counters almost he played a set championship where he said that this interaction where he faced an opposing Kita also came up and the judge ruled it this way. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that is how it works because obviously we know that you know damage and other things on the previous character that you shift on top of carry over to that shifted character. So I, I, didn't, I didn't disagree with him. I was like, okay, if that's how it works, that, that makes sense because of how we know shift mechanics for other things like damage counters work. Um, I just didn't know Kita acted as like a counter, right? Um, but it's fine so i just end up questing for two instead which is unfortunate because it means the opponent does go to nine next turn um but we did force the discard of the arthur at least and if we have a couple of steel songs to follow up with we ho hopefully we'll be able to stabilize so yeah we had a little bit of a back and forth there if you're wondering why that took so long um he was kind of explaining it to me uh so yeah, i go ahead and i pass turn so this is you know if you're watching this video you made it this far this is a, a very important interaction to make sure you understand if you go up against um amber decks in your set championships because kita is being played in the meta it's played in that well obviously amber amethyst aggro if you face it but also amber emerald discard because the kita combos very well into singing the um under the sea uh, but you know, if you if something does survive the under the sea and you shift on top of it or something, right? Or they don't have the under the sea and they just shift Kita and you shift on top of your character, it's important to know that interaction and how that works because that could be a game winning or game losing play for you. So the aggro decks you can see here, they they still have a lot of considerations to make, um, and I've talked about this many times where Robin Hood helps you keep pace with the aggro decks. Um, they think for a very long time here and they opt to drop the Baloo in bodyguard mode which will once again protect their board for another four lore potentially unless i have steel songs to out their characters so this robin hood will have to crash into the blue which will get them an instant two lore putting them at 11 and then do i have something that can out the wendy or the um kita probably not so that means they'll go to 11 and then they'll gain another four putting them to 15 which puts them well in the range to just do a couple of goat cycles and or drop a queen's castle and close out the game that way so you can see me here um take out the blue and i gain two lore off the robin hood banishing the blue i take no damage since it is a zero three character um the opponent goes to 11 and we opt to i think drop a jafar here yeah, which forces the discard of the final card, and it's a Queen's Castle. So the opponent was debating, he was telling me here, do I play Queen's Castle in this scenario, or do I play the Baloo? And basically, we talked about this after the match, I think I included the footage here, but we talked about this as Baloo basically represented um, four lore, because you gain two when it's banished, and it saves your Wendy from getting outed by the Robin Hood, versus the Queen's Castle would get you two next turn, and then potentially moving Kida to the castle and then getting you another two. So it could represent four lore, but the Queen's Castle was more of a risk, because if I had a bigger board to out the castle next turn, you'd only get two lore off of it and nothing guaranteed um, four that you get off the Baloo and the Wendy questing here. So, and, and again, you know, it, it could change based on if I had Steel Songs in my hands to out things, but obviously I didn't in this scenario. Um, but that's kind of the thought process you have to go through. So once again, the opponent does indeed end up questing from 11 to 15 now with the Kita and the wendy and they top deck the rabbit which was very strong and they ink the card that they drew off rabbit in the snake because obviously they don't want to hold cards to get discarded by bucky so you can see here like aggro is putting up a decent fight are they going to be able to close out the game these shift lines that aggro decks can play like this kita being a, a three five body is actually pretty relevant because i have to throw multiple things into it in order to out it right nothing with emerald steel can really take it down now obviously it's a, a little bit of a different situation when you go up against ruby decks with aggro because they have maui which we know to be a very prevalent threat but that is something that you need to consider here so i think i think for a pretty long time here for some reason i just couldn't piece together what i exactly wanted to do but i do have a steel song and i just need to think about what is the best way to do it i think the best thing to do is have the least damage on the jafar take the most damage on the robin hood so i'm going to opt to baboom the kita and use the Robin Hood to take out the Kita. So I take three damage on Robin Hood since he can afford to take that damage. And then gain two lore off Kita getting banished. Use the Jafar to take out the Wendy. So I only take one damage here. Um, and then I draw a card off the Wendy getting banished off the Jafar. Um, I don't gain any lore. So yeah, not don't increase the lore counter there. But do draw a card. And I still have two ink available. And I can ink something and cast a song like a strength in order to out the rabbit which it looks like what I'm doing. I didn't see what I inked there, but yeah, I inked something and we're gonna go ahead and pay three 
to just out the rabbit again just throwing the opponent putting the opponent oh no i played diablo instead okay that's interesting i definitely did have a steel song here i remember but i guess i was like well 16 lore hopefully it's not too threatening um the opponent is obviously going to play whatever they top deck i'm just hoping it's not a goat and of course it's a goat <laughs> so they go to 16 17 now with the rabbit and i'm just like oh well now i have to out the goat which is going to get them to 18 and i have to out this rabbit which is going to give them a draw right um and then if they draw yet another goat and a cycle they can go to 19 and have the goat back in hand to close the game out the next turn so i just gotta hope they don't top deck more goats here to close the game out. i can deal with a castle at this point with my board and this is the other deficiency when you choose to play aggro is that when your opponent eventually goes wide on, against you um it it's very hard for you as the aggro player to out the opposing board now i did play a match with this opponent where they actually cycled fox like two times and outed my board when i was playing ruby amethyst so that was an interesting matchup maybe i'll post that one if you're interested if you made it this far let me know in the comment section below we use the jafar to take out the rabbit there which puts two more damage on the jafar so we have three damage on it and we do draw off of that interaction the opponent also draws off the rabbit um, leaving the field we're going to opt to quest with everything here um which will allow us to go to oh i made the mistake here again where i think i just pressed the middle part but we go to 10 and i have to out this goat i can, definitely can't leave it on board here um and so with the draws off the jafar and um the draw for turn and i think from what we had in our hand before we are going to be able to deal with the the goat i hope okay oh my goodness the ursula deceiver reveals the isabella which could be a problem um, do I not have the answer to the goat? I maybe I'm thinking of a different match. I'm here talking about oh playing the Diablo instead of outing the rabbit with a song, but maybe I didn't have the song in this scenario. So the Isabella here is very interesting, right? So I need a Bruno or a strength, right, in order to take it out at this point, or an Ursula Deceiver of all with a strength of uh, with a let the storm rage on, but I. If I leave this goat, I do risk the opponent top decking. Okay, I just pass on this. This is very interesting. So I draw off of the Diablo here. The, if the opponent quests and goes to... So if they top deck a snake here, they win. Because if they quest, they go to 18. They play snake, bounce the goat, go to 19. Ink the Isabella, replay goat on 4 ink. And they go to 20. So that was the only thing they can do to win the game. They ink the Isabella, pay 4 for a castle... And then move goat to the castle quest with the goat go to 18 so when i out the goat they will go to 19 um and i can't win it here so yeah i guess i did not have a song um maybe i don't know if i had well if i had a bruno it, you know it would have been a risk to bounce the goat because they would have gained lore and then if i didn't discard the rent like randomly the goat off of the bruno and discarded the isabella they just play goat next turn and gain the lore back so that would have been not the greatest so if i had bruno that was definitely not the play um maybe that's what i had though because i probably had bruno and i was like i don't want to bruno the rabbit i thought i did have a song but i guess i opted to play diablo on that turn um, anyways, in this scenario now, I do have to deal with this goat. Um, I could throw the Robin Hood into it, which would banish the Robin Hood, but get me a draw. But it might be better to quest with the Robin Hood and get the two lore. The Jafar could take out the goat as well and get me a card draw. But again, that's three strength that I would lose off the board instead of getting, um, yeah, damage into the castle. So here I throw everything into the castle, it looks like. Interesting. Let's out it. And I'm going to put the opponent on, unless you top that goat next turn, I win the game. So, you know, you can see it's a pretty close matchup despite, you know, Steel on paper having a favorable matchup against aggro. Like, you have to continually draw your songs in order to out their ready threats, which, you know, shouldn't be too hard to do, especially since you have a Diablo and a Beast Tragic Hero in your deck. But aggro really can put the pressure on. So I do eventually strength... Um, again, not sure if I had that in hand the whole time, but I, I guess I slow rolled it a little bit. We're going to go to 18 and pass, and we have... We, do we even have lethal on board? I don't think so. 1, 2 off Robin Hood, 3 from Bucky, 4 from Jafar, 5 from Diablo, 6 from Ursula. So we go to 18. So if the opponent top deck scope, they can still win the game. Um, but I imagine I have a couple of answers for whatever they play. If they play another location, you know, we can take it out with what's on board um, or probably have a Zeus or something in hand for a character or location that they have up. Um, but yeah, whatever they drew there, I mean, shouldn't be too hard, right? You're playing aggro. You should just be able to drop it. 
but I think maybe they're thinking if if they oh they top deck the fox ooh and that's where it can hurt yeah because they can't play it because fox would banish itself so they have to ink it because I would just um, yeah discard it off Bucky and I think here I'm explaining something with the Bruno so I think I did have the Bruno in hand the whole time. And my thought process, I think, in this scenario was I have to play around. Like, you have to play around so many things, right, when you're going up against aggro. Like, I have to consider the goat. I have to consider the bounce. I have to consider top deck Chernabog. And my only out to Chernabog, like I mentioned, is the Bruno. So um, having to, you know, strength the goat instead of Brunoing it back to hand to force the discard, you know, it can be an easy misplay where you say, okay, I'm just going to Bruno because it costs more um, and save the strength. But it's like, no, you need to save the Bruno in case they top deck Chernabog. So their top deck wasn't a goat. It's, it was a a uh arthur and we were able to win the game um off of them not top decking goat for game the chernabog was coming up though after the arthur and that's why we had the the bruno but if they did drop chernabog like a turn earlier and we didn't have the the bruno we would have lost right because we would have only been able to go to 18 and the next turn the opponent quest with the chernabog for game going from like 18 or 19 up to, to, to 20 over over 20 well that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video guys if you enjoyed it let me know in the comment section below and if you made it this far a like would be appreciated if you did enjoy the video thank you again for watching though quantum is out